Hey, hi everyone. So welcome to this uh, final video of this series of scale from zero to million users. So in the previous video, we have discussed about how we are scaling the web tier actually. And in this video, we will be concluding with how we scale the data tier. So data tier actually can be scaled in two formats actually. One is like horizontal scaling. We have discussed this about in the chapter one, what is horizontal scaling and what is vertical scaling. How does this fit into our data tier scaling? We will be discussing or mostly focusing on that part actually. So first, if we go with vertical scaling, we know like vertical scaling basically means adding more power to our existing system like increasing the CPU, RAM or the disk size, etc. in an existing machine. According to Amazon Relational Database Service, a database server can be up to 24 terabytes of RAM, can have 24 terabytes of RAM, right? This is like a powerful database server. But there are certain limitations to vertical scaling. Like we have discussed earlier also, one of the limitations is like, we can add more power to CPU or RAM to a, an existing machine but there are hardware limits always, right? So like you can have the power of a supercomputer, but every organization firstly cannot afford because that is expensive. And secondly, to increase, there might be a risk of like if a single machine is serving as a master database for a particular service, then there can be a case of, or there can be a risk of single point of failure every time, right? And the over, overall cost of it has been found out that the overall cost of vertical scaling is very high. So considering these limitations of vertical scaling, what we primarily focus on while scaling the data tier is horizontal scaling. So now let's look into what is horizontal scaling. So like by the name horizontal scaling, we mean like instead of increasing the power of a single existing machine, we introduce more number of machines to accumulate the power or to get the disk size which we want for our service. So this is also known as in case of database, this is also known as sharding. So what is sharding? Sharding is like it is separating the large databases into smaller ones so that they can be easily managed. So like instead of increasing the data server, single machine server to accommodate the power or the RAM, etc. We separate out the large databases. into smaller chunks of databases you can say like and you can you can understand like that chunks of machines so they can be and these are called actually shards so this can be easily managed right so like if i have an existing database like this in case of vertical scaling what we will be doing is like we will be for this database we will be increasing the power so if you like understand from this example like Initially, like we had RAM of let's say 8 GB. Now we increase the same existing machine to have 16 GB. Whereas in case of horizontal scaling, what we are doing is horizontal scaling, what we are doing, like this is an existing RAM. And if we want another 8 GB, what we do is we introduce another machine of same computing power of same RAM. Now we have in total like 16 GB of RAM for this service to support in total 16 GB. So like instead of having a single machine to support the functioning, we have two databases servers which support 8 GB, 8 GB of RAM each. This can be RAM, this can be disk size depending on your use case. Okay. So like now, if we understand with the help of an example, like how this data is being distributed across multiple shards. So one of the basic functionality of these shards is like they have the same schema. They have, they share the same schema, but the data is different in each shard. The data is different in each shard. So like how do we distribute the data? So let's say we we'll, let's consider an example where we, where we have four shards 
of databases right we have four shards so one of the main thing of sharding of a particular data is the sharding key or the partitioning key which we will be considering to distribute the data in this shard so let's say we have an user id right and if i do a modulo normal mod hash of this uh, user id and it let's say it gives a value of let's say 2 this is my shard 0 this is my shard 1 this is my shard 2 this is my shard 3 so since we have a value 2 so for this let's user id let's say this is uh, 6 so an user having user id 6 will his data or his or her data will be stored in shard 2 so in this way sharding so here user id is our sharding or you can say partitioning key so partitioning or sharding key is also an important factor which we need to consider while distributing our data in multiple shards although this might look a feasible solution of sharding the database distributing the data in all these shards but if you you can see if you see this uh, partitioning or the partitioning key can cause although if we choose a specific partitioning key depending on the number of database let's say the data size increases if i add another shard right let's say this is s4 in that case this 4 goes to 5 now when i do 6 modulo 5 i will be having 1 so whenever let's say data increases we introduce another shard to store the data now this mod modulo number of servers which we do has increased and so whenever we are trying to retrieve the key for user id 6 we will be hitting this shard 1 and then we will not find the data for that what we have to do is we have to re redistribute the data or in multiple shards whenever we have we are introducing a new shard whenever we are deleting a new shard etc so these are all the things which we need to consider if you want to go in details about how we distribute or how we handle this distribution of data whenever a new shard is introduced or new shard is deleted you can go through my playlist of key value store where we have discussed in details about how do we actually partition the data actually introduce sharding and all there by the method of consistent hashing so you can go through that also so another problem this is like sharding problem this which we discussed sharding data or you can say resharding of data this is one of the limitations one of the problem which we discussed another thing is like a celebrity problem what is a celebrity problem let's say a famous hollywood artist a famous cricketer or a fam famous sports personality his or her data has been sharded into his or her data has been mapped into a singular shard like a celebrity from hollywood have millions of users a celebrity a sports personality has millions of users and all his data are being all their data is being sharded into let's say s0 so s0 there will be an unequal uneven is distribution of data right so s0 will have like a huge amount of data corresponding to those celebrities whereas s1 s2 will be vacant so this is like unequal distribution of data so and s0 might reach its limit and further we need to require a repartition s0 to handle or to store these amount of data so this is a celebrity problem or this is also called a hotspot key problem this thing is a limitation of this sharding so for that what we have to keep in mind is like two major personalities from the same field his or her data shouldn't be sharded into this shouldn't be stored in the same shard or we can store them in multiple shards in order to have a better functionality and even distribution of data and another major disadvantage is like since data is being distributed in all these shards to perform like join operations these become difficult right across database shards this become almost impossible across different data database shards etc so for that a common workaround is like denormalization of these database so that queries can be performed in a single table so denormalization of these databases moreover apart from this relational databases what we can have in order to sustain a large amount of data for a particular for millions of users we can also have depending on our use case depending on the sql versus no sql comparison like we can introduce also no sql databases or for storing 
unstructured data because this can store a huge amount of data they can be easily scalable etc so we can also prefer nosql data store to store our data for millions of users whenever the user base is very much high or in high number so in this way considering all these limitations all the use cases we can scale the database or the data tier in our in our scenario so like if you prefer like if you see like the user database will not exceed a certain limit and vertical scaling can accommodate all those users data in your database then you can go forward with vertical scaling or else you can go forward with horizontal scaling like sharding of data choose the partition key wisely in order to store shard the data in equally among all these partitions and you can also use consistent hashing for that matter and if in case like relational databases if you if in case non relational database is in support of your, or in favor of your use cases then you can also go with that because it is it can store large amount of data and it is easy to scale also so with this we come to an end of this uh, scaling from 0 to millions of users we have discussed uh, from fundamental from basic architecture to normalizing or reducing the load and the response time to scale the web tier we have discussed about scaling of data tier etc so if we go through a final architecture diagram after we have discussed all the components in details so here we have the final diagram of all the components which we have discussed so this is like our web application or mobile application through which we access the website or the service this is our dns which resolves the domain names into the ip addresses basically we get a public ip address of this load balancer load balancer in turn communicates with the web servers through private ip addresses if you remember before that connecting with the web server if there are any static content of this web page we get from this cdn so this cdn delivers like the static contents like the css javascript files images videos etc from this cdn we can fetch here then load server depending on the load on each individual web server distributes the request to the particular web server the web server in turn then if there are perform, performs the request right so let's say the workers are busy currently so the requests are being stored into the message queue workers in turn take the request from the message queue perform the operation and returns back to the returns back to the result to the web server in order to send the response to the client or the end user web servers in turn if they see like they need the database to perform the operation or some data need to fetch some data to perform operation first they will go to the cache first they visit the cache if the data is present in cache it is written from here if not then go to the database the database in turn will return the data update the cache and the data is finally written to the web server the web server in turn stores this data stores this operation in the message queue message, the workers pull these operations from the message queue perform them and return back the response to the end user or the client and this there is no sql which stores the session data of a particular user this is a non relational database as you can see like no sql is mostly preferred to act as a shared storage so what does this store like this stores the user's sessions data instead of storing in the web server making it independent thereby it can be scaled independently as we have discussed this also and these are some of the external features with our increase in the number of users and the increase in the geographical location multiple geographical location our service is running so in order to find out if there is any error in processing or to find get some key business metrics we can use logging we can use metrics we can use monitoring and automation to perform test before deploying into the production so that before going to the end user we can perform multiple tests we can automate certain tests to check whether our service is working properly or not so this is in this way we can scale our architecture from supporting zero or some minimal amount of users to millions of users so thank you for watching this video thank you for watching this playlist and i'll come back with you and see you in another new video in another new topic